Thank you so much for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. We're glad that you're here rocking with us today. We've got another dope show lined up for you. We have tons of music industry news and, of course, Beats by yours truly sprinkled in throughout. Yeah, they sprinkle in there, too. They sprinkle and we got to roll with them. <laughs> yes, yes. So, all right, let's just go ahead and dive in and hop to it. All right. Let's go.
Okay, and we're back with music industry news. First off, man, if you haven't heard the buzz about Hit Piece, oh my goodness. So, you know, they just started up a whole bunch of trouble by um, selling NFTs that weren't even authorized. So they are just taking people's music and selling it. And they claimed, you know, once artists started finding out, they're like, hey, you know, we didn't give you permission to do this. What's going on? They're like, oh no, everybody's going to get paid from what we've done. But the fact is, they didn't get permission first. So, you know, after all that backlash went down, they pulled the website off. So, like, it's there. It's kind of like a placeholder. But you can't, you know, click around for anything. And it was almost like an apology. Well, not even really an apology. But it's like, oh, yeah, we're listening. So, you know, we're waiting to make sure everything's the way that you want it to be type deal. So, you know, just because they did that doesn't mean that it's done and over with. So the RIAA is demanding information. So that's the Recording Industry Association of America. And so, you know, they said, hey, it's still not cool. This is not the end of it. So they sent a letter to the attorney that represents them saying, OK, first of all, make sure you don't do this again. And also to provide a complete list of all the site activities, account for all the NFTs that were auctioned off. And uh, they want to know exactly how much was earned to make sure that the artists get their just due. (laughs) (laughs) Wild, isn't it? That is, man. It's in other words, you know, you properly would say, you know, why did they do that? But but actually say, well, why did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's bananas. Everybody wants to get in on the NFT craze, but, you know, there's a way to do it. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That, I think that, um, yeah, it, it wasn't well thought out on their, on their parts. Yeah, because, you know, what you were saying, you know, everybody wants to get in on it, but see what they want to do. They want to slide. Mm-hmm. See, that's a different. That's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it's speaking of NFTs, uh, family and music. Um, they are actually trying to help protect songwriter rights. Um, they launched a new project, uh, MGNTA. So it's going to use Blackpool's identifier functionality to help create NFTs that will uniquely identify um, each songwriter and their participation in the song. So this way, if you you know collab with somebody, and if you do it this way, then everything will be in line. You don't have to worry about who's going to get what royalties because it'll already be built into the NFT. So we've shared there's been some other um, projects kind of working on the same thing. But with this particular technology, it's something that we might see a little bit sooner than some of the other ones that we've talked about before. So the whole aim is just to make sure that all the songwriters get their credit and they don't have to worry about, um, you know, missing out on royalties that they've earned. Well, you know, there's a specific technology, the specific word that you just said concerning all this was technology. I gave mm. it away about it. <laughs> <But> technology. <laughs> technology, man. That technology for just about anything is moving at the speed of, of faster than the speed of a of, uh, of silver bullet. Yeah. I mean, technology. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, they're working relentlessly just 24 hours a day trying to to sharpen technology with this and that. Here we go again. So they made some technology, got them in the door. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, speaking of which, John Legend's getting in on it too. So he co-founded Our Song. So that's another new NFT platform that's supposed to reshape the music industry once again for artists and songwriters. So, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. Just like we said, everybody's trying to get in or slide in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah there's gonna be options out there so um you know I, man it's probably been about a year or so and it seems like we talk about nfts nearly every week it's always something new uh going on so you know the good thing about it is is that there will be a lot of options if that's something that you're interested in doing if you're an artist out there or even a fan that um You know, maybe you've got a friend that makes music and you'd like them to be able to hop in on it. There's so many choices out there. So, yeah, word to the wise. Yeah, word to the wise. (laughs) All right. And more. I'm going to say this first. I'm going to say this first right here in front of everybody. I'm going to say this right here. Now, 
you now if you if you a chick with beats if you ever get the inside tip on anything else that has to do with a legitimate business like this like you did six months eight months nine twelve months ago because you were the only one talking about these nfts 12 months ago <laughs> okay no, look where we are. So I'm letting you, I'm asking you, <laughs> everybody, else, if you ever <laughs> get an inside tip on anything, you better, you, hey, you better call. Hey, oh yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> 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 All right. And yeah. So even more NFT news. And I'm seeing that this will probably be a much larger trend. But uh, Golden Voice, the people who had up Coachella, have announced that they're auctioning lifetime Coachella VIP passes as NFTs. And so um, they partnered with the cryptocurrency exchange FTX in order to produce the NFTs. And so there's a set of 10 that will, the people who win the auction, they get passes to the festival. Um, some of them come with unique VIP experiences and each one is tailored to each specific NFT. So that way they're actually all different. And so some of them can even include um, air conditioned tents, uh, special VIP seating on stage and I mean, special dining, different VIP areas. So they're offering a lot of things here and especially for it to be a lifetime pass. Uh, one of the cool things about NFTs is like once you buy them, you own them and you can also sell them so you know maybe somebody wants to capitalize on it for maybe four or five years maybe they're tired of it who knows the value of that could go up and then when they sell that to someone else they can make a profit off of um, what they were able to enjoy for a set amount of time and so I mean it's a logical move to make on their part and I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of other festivals following suit how about that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And so this is another flip side of that. Um, most of the time when people talk about NFTs, it's always, you know, the good part. But um, some people are saying that it's a potential if things kind of start to move that way. And we might start seeing a little more bootlegging and piracy and stuff again, kind of like we did in the early 2000s. Um, which is kind of interesting because right around this time that this started, you know, kicking up a little bit. Uh, piracy has started to slowly increase again. So it had been decreasing over the past five years consistently, but last year in 2021 is starting to rise. So out of all the, yeah, it's, it's bananas, but yeah, out of all the visits, stream ripping sites accounted for 39.2%. Um, unlicensed streaming sites were 35, 31.5%, and illegal downloads made up 24.3%. And of course, uh, public and private torrents factored in there, but you know that was only like five percent. So we're starting to see a little bit of that again. So it'll, you know, it'll be kind of interesting to watch, and uh, yeah, see what enterprising minds can come up with a solution for this potential problem. Uh huh. Wow, <laughs> isn't that something? Yeah. All right, and Utopia has acquired Centric Music Group, so they've launched a new royalty management services unit. So once again, this is something else that's supposed to be able to help with uh, copyright management, distribution, license management, all this other stuff, something that'll make the process a little more streamlined. So yeah, something else that uh, should be helpful to artists. So that's always a good thing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You know what? All of these tips that you're giving, man, you know, hey, you got to start a charge line for all of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> reap, always reap available. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, reap always available them. for uh, exclusive consulting. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Hit me up, chickabeats.com. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Put a, new, put a new link on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, Twitch has teamed up with uh, indie music licensing group Merlin. So the partnership is supposed to unlock live experiences worldwide. So that's great um, to kind of give indies the chance to capitalize off of the magic that is Twitch and, you know, some of the success that a lot of people have found there. So that's always a good thing. Um, they've been working really hard to uh, try to partner up with a lot of the major labels so it's good that there's some indie representation in there as well. Mm. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. Hey man, you know we're on the fast track with this stuff, man, and, and so and, and you're the spearhead, okay? Mm-hmm. So uh, a chick, a chick with beast university is in the mix. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, and speaking of the major labels, well, the big three collectively generated more than twenty billion dollars last year in twenty twenty one. Mm. So check this out. Warner generated five point fifty eight billion across all, you know, like the global music publishing and recorded music divisions. Sony, seven point four nine billion across the same. Universal generated seven point two one billion across both. But guess what? That was just the first nine months. So that doesn't even include the fourth quarter. There is money in music. Don't listen to people who say that it's not. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, the countless interviews that we do, some folks, you know, uh, when they talk about, you know, their history, when they first started, well, you know, unfortunately, you know, their family steered them away from music, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, but see feelings and thoughts, they're, they're changing because, you know, in the olden days, you know, your family, hey, now, you know, we want you to do what? We want you to just go, you know, go to school, get a job. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but, you know, that's shifted, man. That's really shifted. So, yeah. hey, here you go. Yeah, because, of course, you have that. And then you also have, um, hate to say it, but the narrative that some of the streaming companies have kind of been pushing. So they make it sound like they're not getting that much money, which is why they can't pay artists more than or well, even a penny per stream. But obviously mm-hmm. that's not the case. If we're seeing this kind of money come in, $20 billion yeah. in 2021 yeah. alone. So yeah. yeah, it's it's there. So the question certain, begs, a, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> a, certain, a certain singer brought that up on a TV show last week. <laughs> and I won't give it any initials, but the name is India dot Irie. And, and you know, but seriously, she was bringing up that hey, you know, mm-hmm. uh, these streaming services are paying us a penny or less, you know, and you know that ain't right, you know. And uh, then here we go, you know, a week later, you know, you've got some more details about that and saying the same mm-hmm. thing. Mm. Yeah, the money's there. Where's it going? Who's got it? Pull out your pockets. Let me see. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, All right. Oh, and speaking of which, yeah, before we head to break, but um, the music distribution services market is supposed to reach 1.68 billion globally by 2030. That's the projection from Allied Market Research. So once again, just more confirmation that it's there. So yeah. Why aren't the artists getting it? Why why isn't it flowing down? But mm-hmm. yeah, that's a whole nother episode in itself. It is. It is. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll have to tackle that soon. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take another quick break and then we'll be right back with more music industry news after this.
we're back with more music industry news. Uh, KKR bought a music catalog from Cobalt for $1.1 billion. We shared that a while ago. And now they're turning it into bonds. So they're using a catalog of 65,000 songs that includes hits from The Weeknd, Childish Gambino, Stevie Nicks, and many more to sell more than $732 million worth of asset-backed securities. So all this is going to be supported by the music publishing and sound recording royalties. So once again, if you're one of those people that's looking into investing in music, there's another way to do it. And bonds are typically considered a little bit more secure than stocks. So, you know, of course, make sure that you check the prospectus of anything that you want to invest in. Do the research for yourself before you pour your money into it. But there's opportunities out there. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well read, well said. <laughs> All right. And Iconoclast is a serious new player in the music catalog acquisitions game. And they just bought Robbie Robertson's uh, rights. So they've acquired his music publishing, his name, image, and likeness rights, and and his recorded music interests covering his career all the way up till now. So um, that's another thing that we've been kind of seeing a little bit lately. While um, these companies have been buying either outright catalogs or stakes in catalogs we've been seeing a lot of this where they're um, also purchasing the name and likeness to be able to do different things with it so you know this is an interesting trend that's happening here um i honestly can't tell you whether it's good or bad just yet but uh, i guess time will tell and we'll see well yeah yeah you know and i gotta say you know a long time ago there was a an issue going well actually still is where um sports uh, um, advisors and other types of, of, of people into revenue, they were going out and um, seeking, uh, they, they'd search and find young uh, musicians and young athletes who were still in grade school and high school. And they were going out and they were buying up all of the websites with those kids' names on them. So then mm. if the kid turned out to be successful, and wanted to get their own website, they couldn't because mm. those folks had bought up all of the websites with their names on them and were charging them exorbitant fees for the website with their own name on. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when you say, and you know, they're only 15, 16 years old at the time. So when you mentioned that somebody just bought uh, Robbie's name uh, uh, and, and like image, it, yeah. We'll see. See, did did they do that before he had the chance to do that? You see, so that's just food for thought. Oh, because yeah. no, if somebody, it was actually included in their deal. So instead of just okay. buying okay. the music catalog, he went gotcha. ahead and sold gotcha. that too. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so you know, just we got to watch that. But you mm-hmm. know, great info, great info, yeah. and great, uh, great. That's a great business move too. Yeah. All right, and speaking of more acquisitions, Primary Wave acquired the music rights of uh, Staley and Star from Alice in Change, their um, estates. So the deal includes a stake in their music publishing as well as their master royalty income stream. So that's all the details that they gave. Everything else wasn't disclosed, so we don't know what percentage. But once again, telling you it's big business. Seems like at least every other week we've got more stories like this. It seems like it because you got you certainly got them stacked up. Oh, today. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. And um, yeah, more acquisitions, but this time for a festival. So the Las Vegas is Life is Beautiful Festival was acquired by Rolling Stone and Penske Media. So they intend to expand it into new territories and broaden its digital footprint and all that good stuff. And uh, so what last year in April, Penske Media had acquired South by Southwest, and they also purchased the American Pavilion at the Cannes Film Festival um, this past January. So, yeah, between music catalogs, music publishing and all that stuff, the likeness, images, festivals, everything's just getting bought up these days. Hey, get your money out. (laughs) Right. Checkbook, digital card, whatever. Let's flow. (laughs) 
All right. And okay, I know this a little bit more of a, a fun tip, fun information here, but a new cassette app, and that's actually spelled K A. I'm sorry, that's actually spelled C A S E T. Um, it lets you create collaborative mixtape playlists with your Apple Music friends. So now users can invite friends to edit a mixtape. You can see who's added a song to it. You can even react to whatever song's been added. And you'll get notifications every time somebody does it to kind of keep the conversation going. So, you know, that's always fun. If you're here, we know you love music. So there's a heads up for you if you use Apple Music. If you're one of those people that always used it or if you migrated uh, part of the Spotify exodus or whatever the case was. But yeah, something for you to check out. That's Cassette, C-A-S-E-T app. Well, you know, I hope the listeners are writing this now, you know, because we've pleaded with them in the past to be ready <laughs> and so you know because this is like uh, a chick with beast.com university and uh with all these tips and so forth so hey if you haven't started writing these things down grab your pen and pad and paper or whatever or text them or whatever you know save this info so you can uh come back on the boomerang after the show is over and and investigate a little bit more deeply yes indeed All right, we're going to take another quick pause for the cause, and then we'll be back before we head out for the night. Okay.
right, that's a wrap for this week's edition of Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. Once again, we thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate you hanging out with us every week, and we can't wait to do it again next week. Oh, man, I mean, it's, it's been a stone gas. <laughs> <laughs> it really has. <is>, so. <laughs> well, good. All good. And, and um, you know, I've been chiping in, chiming in, chiming in. Uh, make sure you visit a chick with the because there's all kinds of great info on there. If you're an aspiring artist or if you're a seasoned pro in the music business, because there's always going to be something in there that's a, a perfect fit for you. Check it out. A chick with might have your next biggest hit right in there. Just waiting on you to choose it. OK, so a chick with accessible globally. Thank you so much. All right. Till next time, tune in, tell a friend. We'll see you then. Peace. Peace.